look at Lexington. It's very sh short. <coughs> and that's what we have here on page 70 of your document. Yeah, we're looking for basically the, the authority. Uh, to a very simple, that something that wouldn't take half an hour on the floor of a town meeting to <laughs> discuss and, and disapprove. See, I was a little surprised that this particular language doesn't further describe, you know, the, the acts of 1975. It doesn't mention the state of Massachusetts or any, any such thing. I mean, the this is not the statement that gives us the authority, though. No, but it's it's the basically the the the, the raw purpose: govern the use of land, size, height, bulk, location, and use of structures. Blah blah blah. So you would go to that if there is con that contradicting articles? If there is? Contradicting articles within zoning? You would go and check them out against the general purpose of the whole document? Really? Because it doesn't say anything. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm trying. I'm trying to understand what the effort is to get this to change <coughs> when it doesn't really say, it's not goals, it's not like the master plan document which has some goals in it. It's a nice statement. Great, sums it up very quickly, but I don't know that it does anything. There probably won't be, there won't be any dispute with it in um, town meeting. Someone will probably try to add to it. <laughs> Someone will want to amend it and add some language which might uh, make for discussion. Right now we have the old purposes in here, right, A through L. Mm -hmm. We look at them and see and which ones we don't like. The the general consensus, uh, I think, of the ZAC was that the um, the current list of things is more master plan charter uh, kind of material than it is the zoning per se. So the, the simple, the, the the very simple statement of this is what zoning does, is more appropriate and certainly less contentious, or less of an uh, opportunity for content contentiousness. No, I don't disagree with that. I'm just wondering whether the purpose should have purpose. Whether it's in we wrote this zoning because we are trying to. Um, trying to hold up the master plan as a document. Thank you. There were some other voices that also said that the, this purpose should be a bridge to between the disconnect of zoning and master plan. So there have been many voices in the Zach about this. I, guess, I mean, I don't have a problem with a statement that says, I don't know that this is the well, I would keep it, but to lessen congestion on, in the streets, right? I don't see why that's a bad Thing. Well, our planning takes that into account. Can, can I say that? Um, let me <laughs> let me just read what Section 2A says. Uh, these objectives are found under Section 2A of the Chapter of 808 of the Legislative. Uh, in, they include, but are not limited to, the following: to lessen congestion in the streets, <laughs> to conserve health, to secure safety from fire, flood, panic, congestion, and other dangers, and, uh, and do I need to go on? All right, so. so the only <laughs> thing that's not, not listed in this bullet list in that was to promote health, safety, and general welfare of the inhabitants of town of we, Reading. So we, in we, essence, all this is doing is taking out these bullet points and referencing in this, which it's those bullet points. Yeah. And the first bullet is the purpose of the state building code, by the way, which is a different, you know, <laughs> health, safety, and welfare. S and okay. so, th well, to that point, what's the point of changing it? Because at least, <laughs> That's what I was yeah, <laughs> at least in here, in here, 
You have them. And you don't need to go look up and say, well, what does that, <coughs> what does that act mean? Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, there's, there's no reason to, to undergo a, uh, a change procedure if, in fact, the preferred change is no change. <laughs> we could add, I this, think could add a statement to the top of it, but I don't see why we want to change it, I guess. I, yeah, I just think that the what we had proposed was not well received. No, so and that was poorly worded, and it hit on some issues that people <coughs> took to task. They didn't want that. So I think they felt that it needed to be changed, whether or not they thought about keeping <coughs> what they currently have. But. So they, they state he's delegating authority through Section 48 to towns and cities to have this. A, zone, a zoning bylaw. So, a purpose of that is how do we understand what the state delegated? I mean, this is good, but the connection to 48 to me, I mean, the, our understanding of how is this authority passed on and what do we plan to do with it. I mean, if, it, if that's it, that's fine. But we need to look at the 48 language, how this is, you know, what is the responsibility of the town when we make this whole document to do? That's the purpose of this document. Okay. Let, let me just make a, a pragmatic su suggestion that the um, we take the the existing bullet points, if you will. I would tend to do away with the A through L for simplicity, mm -hmm. but change the, you know, do away with our 1.1 and replace it with the, this bylaw has been adopted to govern blah, 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 uh, and say, and for the, pr the purposes set forth uh, in, but not limited to, you know, section blah, 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 colon, <laughs> followed with the, the bullet list. Yeah, I agree. Does that make any sense? So and then you want to delete all those and um, just <coughs> one more time. Whoa. Well, I would just change the first sentence to be the Lexington sentence. Right and then get rid of the alphabetized bulletin. There. And those just become real bullets. I don't have to do that right here. So. Um, but not limited to the following? But are we not limited to the law? No, it's already in there. Oh, yeah. It's just before that. So there. So now you bring this to town meeting, and what? Do they ask you why you're wasting their time? Do they see it as that? Well, we're putting <coughs> into it specifically the governing use of land, size, height, bulk, etc. I mean, so we're. The reason that we bothered <laughs> is primarily the. How does how do these use. bullets parallel to the master plan? Have we ever looked at them? One on one. Well, I think we should. We should look at those and see how they parallel to what the master plan goals are. And, um, and then at least we can defend them. If people say, why'd you add this? Why'd you leave all of this? We could say, mm -hmm. that this is exactly what we worked on. Unlike the old zoning act, the purpose of zoning 
the purposes of zoning are no longer contained within Chapter 40A. And have not been incorporated into any general law. So 40, Chapter 40A doesn't, doesn't provide the purpose for zoning in it. It defines zoning, though. And the so definition of zoning in 40A is very close to that. It does not define the purposes of zoning, but define what zoning is. Which ordinances and bylaws adopted by cities and towns to regulate the <laughs> use of land, there is. Funny buildings stigma. and structures mm -hmm. to the full extent. Yeah. So. I think that if we add to this list, there will be pushback at town meeting. I don't really want to add to it. I just want to know how these, yeah. whether they parallel what we <coughs> said in the other document, yeah. support it. Mm -hmm. They, they should support it. I can't imagine that they, um, these are all sort of good goals. I can't imagine that we wrote something in our master plan that would go against good planning. So we are set, I don't think we really included this in the future. Item, item K includes the, the master plan stuff. We have uh, this on the agenda yep. for 518. So we can take another look at it. Yep. S give you guys a um, s side by side <laughs> goals, bullet points, master plan versus zoning. Color table. Colors. Anything else on that? That's that was efficient. Okay, um, site plan review regulations. So, in your packets, page seven, dust pass packet seventy one is. The special exception from Loudoun County, Virginia, John had mentioned it at the last meeting to take a look at, so I um, thought it was pretty, pretty clear um, as to what their requirements were. So what I did is I took that and looked at our application because our checklist was sort of built into the application. Um, pulled that out of the application to the sort of, you know, our checklist for site plan review, I guess, version of this special exception. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and uh, mimic, mimicked it that way based on our existing checklist, um, as well as a few other, just a few other minor things that weren't included previously. So what I envision is the application for site plan review would be accompanied, you know, they would follow this sort of procedure, include the checklist, as well as whether or not they request the item to be waived, because we have talked about that before, so. One thing that was a little bit challenging, and I'm open to suggestions um, in the site plan application was to try and incorporate minor site plan review because we don't have an actual application for minor site plan review at this point. We just usually just did a request. I don't know if it's necessary. I, it seems to work fine the other way, but um, since we are specifically calling out thresholds for minor site plan review and the bylaw, it seemed to make sense to have it on the same application because we sort of set it up thresholds based on site plan review versus minor site plan review. Um, could you have a checkbox that said something like, um, you know, minor site plan review, stop here, kind of, you know, do not complete the remainder of this document. 
for a minor site plan review only can only complete sections one through four. I guess for minor site plan review, what is it that you look for? Is it's different for for everyone, correct? Or are there some things that you feel like you have to have, and then then it starts to be different? Well, in the administrative rules that CPDC established for minor site plan review, it called out specifically what they needed, and in some cases. I'll use Planet Fitness as an example. So they went through minor site plan review. The administrative rules called out the plan, a plot plan or sketch, photographs, the abutters envelope, and a project narrative, essentially, which is pretty much how we've kept it. Um, but we knew that there was a possibility they would need a traffic study. And we made that clear to them up front that that may be needed. Um, but it, it, it can vary. Um, in the new bylaw, we, we sort of put the administrative rules right into the bylaw, saying this is what's required, which is essentially the same thing. So. Yeah. But there may be two or three different categories that you would go minor. And I think with what we require, it is pretty minimal that even for a, a very, very minor, it's still appropriate for them to submit at least a plan or a project narrative or photographs um, so what do you have how many this ends up being three pages right yep so you have a fourth page here presuming right up to this when you when you produce this it's going to be two pages, two pieces of paper. So you have a, a a single page that you could do a minor site plan review sort of checklist on by itself, maybe on the back. Mm -hmm. um, perhaps you can provide those sort of the minimum requirements, and then is there are there ones are there other components that you ask for more often than not that you could you know have s something instead of instead of a provide and waived but uh, something you know check uh, uh, confirm with um, town planner if required well I'm wondering if we can even go more simpler so if you look on page 77 of your packets it's the application so what I have here is the applicability which reflects the current bylaw and then the procedures. I have site plan review, where I talk about the, the checklist for site plan review, and then minor site plan review, it, it calls out that it's completely separate. Maybe it's as simple as they fill out this application and, and that's it. They don't have to submit the checklist. Um, This is as applicable, right? You yep. don't need to have all three. Right. In, at the brief description, they say, they say you know, redo the facade openings. Mm -hmm. That would be enough. Then, you, then they will come to you for the second step, the second phase of defining the project. Yeah, generally, when people fill this application out, they do a very, very brief statement, but they always they submit supplemental material that further describes the project. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they just say, construct new building, which, we, which we've seen, and we don't get a supplemental narrative where we'll, well, we don't get any other information. We have to ask them for it. So, I, I would think that it would be helpful to you to take out this section where you have minor site plan review or um, minimize it. I, well, applicants for minor site plan review shall submit eight copies of the application um, 
and completed uh, project checklist. I mean, um, and then do just the checklist on the back. That way, when you know, for every application, you know, they're doing the app, they're doing the application, and they're sort of you, you got to have the checklist yeah. completed. Um, and that also might give you a way to, um, if you leave some some a checklist with some blank lines, if you're you know some blank spaces with maybe like a, a other requirements determined by town planner and then when you're talking with them you can you know write down hey by the way you guys need this and you need to do this and you need to do that and they walk away with Thank you. something Thanks, specific Thank you, yep. um, yeah it's really the checklist for minor site plan review is going to be all of four or five lines and then adding Adding that in. Uh, yeah, having some space so that other. you can write, yeah, other, and then you can, or they can write other requirements in there. <coughs> but that way, it's sort of like an automatic, like, oh, yeah, site plan, B big or little, you do the application, you do the checklist, we go over the checklist, make sure that you're okay, and then off we go. Yeah, I would need, I, I feel like I would need to then add to pa page 90, this this page here, though because this is specific for site plan review, you know, the 24 by 36, the, well, I have some, some additional um, notes that I'd like in there about revisions and stuff. Today's dental submittal actually highlights that because nobody ever clouds the changes. So that plan comes in and uh, yeah. If we had changed over, if the board had changed out, right. you're looking at a completely new plan, you don't know what changed. Yeah. And they never make these revisions. So I'll send you this text. I'll type this up and send it to you so it's legible. About making revisions to submitted plans. Should we also have the I think we've talked about this. The do we need 14 copies of the site plan submitted in 11 by 7? I mean, in full size. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, that, that's <coughs> where. Uh, so we've asked staff about that, and at this point, really only one department has agreed to go electronic. Everybody else still wants the hard copies. I don't know about full size. But um, I have asked if they want to just, but some, some do like to roll the plans out still, and you know, I, it's fine. So um, we always like f five for you, five for the board, two for the planning staff, um, and then all these other departments, and only one, one of which has agreed to the electronic submittal. Until they give me a. Uh, an e size viewing screen. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we so just put in. Everybody's somebody mentioned that the other day that there should be a technology fee. What's that? That would we we pay for a tablet. Microsoft services. 52 inch. Yeah. You just work on those. Um, as far as the drainage report, you know, that you guys have made that clear that you don't want to see that. We keep one on file for you and you get it electronic, mm -hmm. but. You know, we don't make them submit 14 copies of the drainage report anymore. So, um, so I think okay. it, at All this right. point we still right. need the 14 yep. copies. We're going to keep keep having that discussion. <laughs> Try. So I'll um, I can take a take another look at this then Nick if you want to give me your comments yeah mm -hmm. I'll, I'll send those to you um, so as far as holding a public hearing to adopt the regulations I I was thinking we could do it next meeting but I think we need a little bit more more time so I, I had it tentative on May four okay. Mm -hmm. So we can take another look at it at the next meeting, um, even. But we have quite a bit on for the sixth. Okay. 
Mm-hmm. Um, or just I'll make the changes and we can work through that at, at the public hearing. Unless you do want to try and see it again on the 6th. So we have a, so we have a meeting April 6th. It's pretty, I have, it's pretty full right now. Well, we should make sure that the material is available um, to the full board, which presumably we'll have for that meeting. And our new member and um, <laughs> Jeff. Yeah. So if, if we just have the, make sure we have the material available. Yep. Then we, we don't necessarily need to spend a lot of time on it. Right. We are making progress on a lot of things. Okay. Planning updates. So on the um, on the agenda, this placeholder. Uh, you'll see the 87 walkers per drive. Um, I, when I first received the request from the town manager, I thought it was the entire site was looking to reduce their hours of operation. After speaking with the representative from Dunkin' Donuts, it's clarified that only Dunkin' Donuts is seeking the limited hours. So they want to operate from um, four in the morning. Yeah, four to ten. Four to ten. Yep, four to ten p.m. Um, and this is going before the Board of Selectmen in April. Request that. The gas station operation would remain 24 hours. And Works for me. <laughs> they wanted to see if CPDC had any concerns or comments to relay back to the Board of Selectmen. Um, you know, I, I drove by the site, but I didn't really drive around it. Any signage that says 24 hours for the Dunkin' Donuts part, they should remove or take down I don't think they had any okay. I don't think we approved any um, and any lighting that's related to that 24-hour Dunkin Donuts operation should go away but I don't I don't think um, no they didn't have anything specific that said 24 hours in any other signs no. any uh, site lighting that's beyond but they could they property? could turn they do have an illuminated sign on the wall that they could turn off they probably and should they, and uh, don't they 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 have a big um, menu board, if I remember correctly, don't they? Yes, that they have should, been, I would hope that they turn yeah, that off. That's what they have an behind. illuminated freestanding sign, they have an illuminated wall sign, and then they have their menu board. Mm -hmm. So all all associated Dunkin' Donuts signage turned off. Yeah, when it should they be clearly off yeah. so that people aren't pulling in and getting mad and vandalizing the property because <laughs> they can't get their <laughs> coffee at 2 in the morning. It's funny, they, they came in here with the double window. They were gung-ho that they yeah. needed to use. They never used that second window, by the way. I think I've used they it once. They let the traffic back up. They never really? used that second window. I used it, it once, I think, slow. when they first started. And mm -hmm. Yeah. Surprise. But I have to say, I've, they're, they're pretty quick. I'm in and out of that drive through when I do stop before I come in. Less than a minute. That one there? Mm-hmm. Never so had I, luck with it. So I come in at 7.30, so I'll stop there at like 7.15. Usually there's not maybe a car in front of me. I would have been there in less than a minute okay. at that time. I, I don't go there on the weekends generally, but which I'm sure is when it's really busy. Okay. So do we have to vote on that or are we just recommending? I, I can just report back that yeah. other than the yeah, signage is fine. Are, so there, uh, are there health department issues with having the rest of the build facility open and to the public and stuff and that I, being unsupervised? 
it doesn't matter to us. But. I don't think so. Um, the uh, the way it's designed, I don't think there's anybody that could, I mean, somebody could probably hop the counter if they wanted to, but it's it, it's not open enough. It's that, not. Yeah. yeah, there's a door I think for. So on the calendar, um, and I'm sorry I didn't print out another copy for you guys, but we had scheduled in terms of our zoning workshop topics, the like a public forum or an engagement <coughs> session scheduled for April 13th. Um, that is an added meeting. And is that something we still want to keep? I know that there was a lot of discussion about, you know, maintaining that sort of level of public engagement. You know, the ZAC had a number of public forums with, with their changes. We're not going to that level of changes, but um, we did set aside a time in that schedule to do that. Uh, if you think we still need it, I have no objection to it. When was that? You said the April 13th. 13th. So we have a CPDC meeting on April 6th, and then this would be April 13th, and then town meeting is on the 27th. So we don't have another CPDC meeting in April. And this would just be public engagement, um, you know, probably brief presentation, mm -hmm. question, answer. I mean, Dave knows full well how we did it with the Zach. Not sure how much attendance we would get, but we certainly want to keep town meeting members as up to speed as possible. Yeah, I think we should probably provide the opportunity. I mean, if it ends up being brief, then so be it. So what we'll want to do is maybe just set aside a few minutes on April 6th and sort of maybe discuss the, uh, the agenda for the evening, if we want to do a brief presentation, how we want to handle that. Um, if there's any thoughts that anybody has at this time, about that. Um, typically with the with the Zach, I mean Dave's fully aware of how we did it, but we usually opened with the brief presentation of what was proposed and generally opened it up to the public for for question and comment. Yeah, the um, as early as we can we want to go to the proposed final language of these things. Uh, and that does not, um, the first way, the first way to present that is not track changes. If you can't read, then you need the, uh, basically a, a proposed clean final thing. This is what we're, what we're trying to achieve. So we did hear a, a lot about that and my takeaway was that people really liked the strike the cross out in bold they liked to see what was what, what changed we have to absolutely you know explain what did change but um, they're used to seeing that crossed out in bold and I think that's where some of the questions or issues came last time around which is a different format than um, track changes right it is different it's it is easier it, it, to, to see yeah I mean you can do that with track changes but you need to be conscious of you need to delete entire words and not for example just take out right letters yes. yeah and in fact what I've done in order to do that in some instances is um, is rewrite your thing 
know the section you're rewriting that you've rewrite, and then turn track, accept everything, turn track changes on, and then copy and paste back in so you see that whole thing as a change instead of the, you know, everything every which way. Um, and, and then I think that it's easier to digest. Well, in okay. some cases, if you're on, do, doing tables, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, I mean, there's nothing wrong with the, with the strikeout and bold. This yeah. is the the uh, wide margin track changes is unreadable as far as I'm concerned. Right. The, I mean, there's yeah. we've been doing track changes just so we know what's changed. But in terms of presenting, I think the idea is that we would switch that translate that over to a cross and cross out and bold. Hiding somewhere in Microsoft Word or, or MS Office is the ability to do a final document and then a, a second final document and compare them. <coughs> yeah, it's in there. And often that gives you a, 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 a tr much truer uh, indication of what changed. Because we we did hear that it people were not happy with having to search for the changes that they they were just and maybe it was just because it, historically it was always presented crossed out in bold and they were used to seeing that so mm -hmm. I would recommend probably just keeping that that format it's more okay. work for me but let's see what it looks like and yeah, yeah. okay. Um, are you still using 2003? Because because the new version of Office has some additional review viewing parameters. So if you go to the review tab, right? Yeah, you can do the final. Right. So now they have one called Simple and one called All, and it it does different things. Then no, we do not have that version. Yeah. yeah. Let's see what it looks like. I haven't really played around too much with it. I've been using the traditional track changes, okay. but I noticed a simple one. Maybe it's uh. more intelligible. I don't know. It's hard to believe they would come up with something good here. Too. So for the next meeting, we're going to be looking at the Aquifer Protect... Ray Miares will be joining us. Um, we'll be looking at the Aquifer Protection District. We'll be looking at the planned residential again, commercial communication structures. And then George is to get us some information on planned unit development. Um, we may also receive a minor modification request for Johnson Woods. And um, the Climate Action Committee will be for more formalizing a plan for that recycle bin in the public lot behind CVS. Hmm. So we have a pretty full agenda in addition to speaking about, you know, the public forum. So that's what's coming up um, some other updates the economic development action plan that we've been working on with MAPC we have the first public forum on April 1st uh -huh. uh, light dinner is provided and it's based on the priority development areas during the priority development mapping project mm -hmm. um, Dave was I know you attended couple of those meetings right um, feels like forever ago <laughs> yep yep so they're gonna they're doing a very in-depth market analysis and uh, modeling getting down to the level of detail on what how much square footage a particular site could support based on the market information that we've received and information about the site mm -hmm. So that starts at 6.30 with dinner. Um, the actual discussion will probably be begin around 7 and set the senior center. Um, I'll be posting the meeting for CPDC and EDC, so okay. we'll be covered if you all can. We would love for you all <coughs> to come if you can. Pizza World has um, <coughs> resubmitted <coughs> for 306 Main Street, so we'll be seeing them probably May 4th for site plan review. They, since they formally withdrew their application, they had to resubmit formally again. Um, he has requested that the site plan <coughs> review fee be waived <coughs> since he already paid it once, which <coughs> planning staff, I have no problem with that. 
um, probably want to make a formal vote when that time comes to waive that. How, how far did he get in terms of like review and he, he didn't really no. get very far, right? No, he had one meeting I think with CPDC. We issued a number of comments and he withdrew. Um, so right. just because he didn't get that far, we felt that, you know. Even so, I mean, <coughs> the long term, <coughs> long time town businesses yeah. got stuck on that stupid site and he's actually trying to make it work, so. We need that site developed. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 How much would yeah. the fee be, anyways? I, I don't recall it's it. Small. I think it was a yeah. couple thousand, maybe. Yeah, yeah. You know, let him use that on furniture or something. We were we were fine with it. Yeah. So yeah. I just wanted to make that, you know, give you a heads up on that. It's um, been on vertical granite curving. There you go. Yeah. Um, And, and that's 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 all I got at this point. We'll be doing. Um, we'll, we're starting to look into uh, updating the hazard mitigation plan. I don't know if any of you were involved with the last plan. Mm. Five, five six so. years ago. Um, we had sound. a grant oh. with MAPC. They did it. They did all the north suburban communities all at once with the with the grant. And we were part of that, so we're looking to update that and try and do it in-house as much as we can. Hmm. So at some point, this board will be involved with that process because I the guidelines from FEMA for hazard mitigation plans has changed since we originally adopted it, and there's a very strong em emphasis on stakeholder input and outreach and engagement and documenting every single piece of that. I mean, you should do that with any plan development, but they have a very it, reiterated over and over and over again in their guidelines. So, um, that's all I got. Okay. Okay. Um. I only got through half of the minutes. And that's what I sent Jesse at some point today. I'm not sure if that's what. Yeah, yeah they. I did make it into the dust packets. <clears throat> Jeff was going to send me comments as well, um, but I didn't see them before we had the meeting started. So. Well, I'd rather wait for his comments then, especially on this yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So do we want to table both? Sure. Then I can get you revisions to the other one, okay. edits to the other one as well. Okay. Well, if there's nothing else, then. Let's move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Adjourn. Thanks. It's cold in here. It's cold. It is cold. Think about how we save. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Are your hands tired? I'm used to writing papers.